Yeah, welcome to Catabolism. And now we will talk about acetic acid fermentation. We have talked in other tutorials about real fermentation pathways. Acetic acid fermentation pathway was historically termed fermentation, as you will see later on. But nevertheless, it's also not a secret. And this pathway, of course, is also relevant in applied microbiology. And it's not so complicated to understand. So here we go. How you produce vinegar from ethanol. That's being told in this tutorial. Now we come to the last fermentation pathway, which is acetic acid fermentation. So let's have a look at this acetate fermentation pathway. You will see in a second why I uh, put that like this, the fermentation. Now we have now produced our ethanol and you have bought your Aldi wine for two euro. And, um, and you say, well, what about making this wine better? So put it in the cellar because your uncle, who is rich, always does it with his 200 euro Bordeaux wines, um, Grand Cru Glacé. He puts it in the cellar and waits for 20 years. Then you have at least once tasted this wine and you say, wow, it's still excellent. So you do the same with your Aldi wine. And uh, as soon as you have hairs like me, you say, now it's time to invite your friends and taste this Aldi wine after 20 years for two euros. By the way, the quality of the Aldi wine is not necessarily bad. I'm just talking about cheap wines where this doesn't usually doesn't work to age them too long. Then you open it and taste it and it tastes like vinegar because the alcohol has been oxidized to acetic acid. And this is likely that this will happen with most of the wines. Only some uh, wines you can age for longer periods. Not a good idea. So if you have bought your wine for two euro, drink it right away. Don't wait 20 years. Makes no sense. But what is happening there? You remember uh, the production of ethanol in our alcoholic fermentation pathway, we had acetaldehyde, which is reduced to ethanol. So the other way round, if we oxidize ethanol, we would say, yeah, we produce acetaldehyde. And the enzyme, of course, is the same. It's the alcohol dehydrogenase. So here we go. We have oxidized ethanol to acetaldehyde. We can go even a step further. And if we oxidize an aldehyde group, of course, what we will get is a carboxyl group. And believe it or not, if we have a methyl group and a carboxyl group, this molecule is called acetate or acetic acid. And it's a next oxidation step. And believe it or not, this enzyme is again an enzyme oxidizing a molecule. So therefore, it's also called dehydrogenase. And this enzyme is then called acetaldehyde dehydrogenase. And here we go. And now we have acetate. This is the one, the, the way if you feed this acetic acid bacteria with um, ethanol, and of course you remember where are they located in what phylum. So this is the uh, bad news that I'm not sitting in the lecture and can look in your eyes. So in what phylum are acetic acid bacteria located? Of course you know it. They're located in the phylum of proteobacteria negative bacteria and of course you know that the, the joke is that acetic acid bacteria acetobacter you call or azotobacter and that's of course something which is completely different and azotobacter is of course not an acetic acid bacterium it's a bacterium which can fix nitrogen although it's also located in the phylum of proteobacteria long story short this is how they do it ethanol acetate but they also usually they grow don't grow on ethanol they grow on glucose so you start with glucose and then you have your oxidative pathway whatever is happening and then you also produce acetate and depending on the pathway you will produce a certain amount of molecules of atp that's at the end what you want via substrate level phosphorylation here what you also will produce as it's an oxidative pathway and at the end you have acetate and not something reduced like ethanol or like um, glycerol or lactate 
you will have produced NADHs. And a good training for you is please prove that exactly oh, carbon dioxide. Of course, you also produce <laughs> two carbon dioxide, but please prove why regardless of the pathway, you have to produce four molecules of NADH or NADPH. So four reduction equivalents are produced if you come from glucose to acetate. Always the same. The molecule of ATP that depends on what, what the pathway is, but this is just oxidation stage and you need to have a certain amount of oxidation steps and then you end up with acetate and four molecules of NADPH. And of course, you always will have two carbon dioxide molecules because this is C6. This is two times C2. C two times C2 is four, missing two more carbons. And these are then going away with carbon dioxide. Now, it's, now we come to the point why it's fermentation. Fermentation is usually said a fermentation pathway as we have defined it at the very beginning is a pathway where we use an internal electron acceptor and not respiration, but acetic acid but, uh, fermentation, as you see here, <laughs> we oxidize like hell. So what could we do? There is no way in this case using an internal electron acceptor. We need to get rid of this NADHs via respiration. And even if you look at this pathway without respiration, we would not generate any energy we just have produced reduction equivalents here. We didn't produce ATP. So if we go from eth ethanol to acetate and that's it, um, there wouldn't be, wouldn't be too much too happy because we have NADH. We need to get rid of it. No ATP. So the ATP generation here is then done by respiration. So we feed in, of course, our NADH into respiration. So this acetate, acetic acid fermentation is a strictly aerobic process. That's very important to understand that. So this is therefore a fermentation pathway, which is not really a fermentation pathway because you use that, uh, use an external electron acceptor, but historically this is named being a fermentation pathway. Now, the, of course, now the um, net balance depends on uh, what uh, path you take for the non-respiratory path. If you start from glucose, you will produce some ATPs. How many? We don't know, but you will produce four NADHs. And if you come from ethanol to acetate, there is no ATP being produced in this pathway. So you produce just NADHs. And then, of course, for the respiration, you know that NADH is oxidized uh, with half of a molecule of O2 and produces three ATP. So you see that here you have six ATPs with respiration and here depending on uh, you have the four NADHs, you have 12 ATPs in this pathway plus the ATPs uh, which have been produced directly via substrate level phosphorylation. So this is acetate fermentation by acetic acid bacteria. Okay, again, don't forget that point number one, acetic acid bacteria are obligate aerobes. They need oxygen. So, and these reduction equivalents, um, it's kind of an oxidative fermentation. You need to recycle them by respiration. Yeah. So interestingly, many of these redox uh, reactions are already membrane associated and directly uh, linked to electron transport chains. So therefore, you even don't need to put that on NADH. It's just the, uh, the reduction, let's say the, the electronegativity of what you have produced there is the same as NADH. So whether you put that directly on another molecule or not, it's kind of an NADH equivalent. But that's, of course, cool if you rely so much on this oxidative process. You can optimize that. You uh, omit the carrier. You have an, a, a step less. You can directly put that in feed that into the electron transport chains. So interestingly, uh, acetic acid bacteria can very, not just oxidize glucose, they can oxidize many different sugars. And that's also used as an application, as you will see later on. Key organisms, we will also um, have a look in the lab course on that, is Acetobacter uh, species and Gluconobacter species, especially here, Gluconobacter oxidants. And at the end, what you produce is acetate. Believe it or not, that's what you have at the end. You can also um, oxidize uh, other things than sugar. And uh, so, for example, in our lab course, we make a, 
uh, that's where we start from glycerol as a substrate. So glycerol we can, for example, produce with our yeast with a Neuburg 2 fermentation pathway. And if we oxidize now in the middle of our glycerol, um, the C at the C2 position, the hydroxyl group, we end up with dehydroxyl acetone. And this you can use as a tanning agent and then you look brown, although you're of course not being protected from sun. Another thing is you can of course oxidize a broad range of substrates, um, for example sugar, and of course you can oxidize ethanol and this is used in vinegar production. This is certainly the main product. But depending on the substrate you might produce other things like L-ascorbic acid, dehydroxyacetone, gluconic acid, cellulose and so on. So there is a variety of different options you have with acetic acid oxidative fermentation. Now overall, um, what I use these fermentation pathways for, I produce energy in the absence of an external electron acceptor. This means of course that if I produce one molecule of ethanol, I could kind of calculate how many molecules of ATP I have produced. So this fermentation product is directly linked to energy production. You will see later on in bioprocess engineering why this is important. So all fermentation products, or fermentation pathways are directly linked to energy production. Also acetate is directly linked to energy production. Now if um, you have no respiratory pathway in your organism, so if you're lacking the respiratory chain, then you are an obligate fermenters and many organisms are that, like lactic acid bacteria. Lactic acid bacteria have to do fermentation, but also Clostridia have to do it. The difference by the one difference by lactic acid bacteria and Clostridia is that lactic acid bacteria tolerate oxygen. They cannot use it, but they tolerate. They are tolerant. Clostridia are strictly anaerobe. So of course that makes things easier if you use the lactic acid bacteria in production because you don't have to keep that oxygen always away. Now, the major pathways in food production and biotechnology, as already said, are lactic acid fermentation, alcohol fermentation, and acetic acid fermentation. Of course, we remember that's an oxidative pathway. Um, now, this are just three pathways. So, of course, the variety and the diversity in the bacterial kingdoms for ferment, uh, fermentation pathway, it's enormous. It's incredible what amount of... Um, products you can form and of course many of them also have an impact in um, in production and so on but certainly a lower impact than uh, the, uh, the things I, the fermentation products we have talked about before um, however um, if you have understood these principles it's easy to read to read another pathway. So the, like I said, the, the most specialized fermenters are certainly Clostridia. They have many additional fermentative pathways and make cool pathways like the Stickland reaction where you use one amino acid as an electron donor and the other ones, um, as, uh, to take up the, uh, to take the reduction equivalence and so on. So this is, really cool and of course this is then the the pathways are beautiful if you look at them but this goes far beyond what we do here and this is certainly from the impact in biotechnology this is certainly lower than the impact of these pathways we have talked about yeah thank you very much for your attention and i'm sure that you're now aware of that an acetic acid fermentation pathway is strictly aerobic and therefore not really a fermentation pathway but nevertheless historically it's subsumized under that and you feel relaxed because it was not so complicated as it sounds like thanks again for your attention and goodbye <laughs>